Hey y'all. Sorry for the truck vlog. And I'm going to do my best to not be all over the place with this video. My original plan was to put on some makeup, put on some decent clothes, sit down with my little book, and talk with y'all. watched any of my previous videos you know that I have been struggling with a weight loss plateau for some time and if you have paid close attention to any of my previous videos you probably picked up on the fact that um, I did what I needed to do to gain a little weight to qualify for VSG surgery so Everything that I'm going to share with you in this video, just like all my other videos, you do what you want with it. I've got, you know, in my settings that these videos are not made for children, so please don't come back at me acting like one and being like, you know, bitch, what you said made me gain 15 pounds. Well, you know what? No, you listen to your body. You do you, boo. I'm just telling you what i've decided to do and what's working for me did i reach out to my nutritionist my plastic surgeon no should have i done that probably and um, i have had a virtual appointment with them for appointments since you know i hit this plateau I was instructed to just keep doing what I'm doing. I'm doing everything right and be patient. Okay, well, my patience ran out. And so I thought, okay, in order for me to see change, I've got to make some changes. Okay, I'm, I'm that person. Okay. What is the definition of insanity? same person will ask you that and hand every person that comes in front of them the same 1200 calorie diet. I ain't about that, okay? Every body is different. So, don't try to treat every body or address everybody's issue the same. I, I don't like that. So, with that being said, disclaimer, not a professional. I'm in no way, shape, or form authorized, certified, qualified to tell you to do any of these things that I'm going to tell you. I'm just simply sharing with you what I've chose to do. This has worked for me in the past, but it was prior to bariatric surgery. Are the same concepts and things going to apply to me now? That is yet to be seen keep you posted on that. Okay, so I've not always been overweight, y'all. Um, I gained weight, you know, through multiple pregnancies, uh, depression, and just not, you know, staying on top of my nutrition and exercise, sort of drinking heavier, and then, you know, I had some medical issues that made it, you know, harder for me to lose weight, not impossible harder and because of where I was at mentally I was just like you know screw this let me just go on ahead and gain this a little bit more weight than I need to gain have surgery and that's going to like magically get me to my ideal weight the chart ideal weight for my age my height and all that which a plastic surgeon also told me you know according to those BMI charts everybody over the age of 8 is obese here nor there. I'm not throwing anybody under the bus. I'm not discrediting anybody who came up with those charts. But they do not take into consideration that different people have different levels of muscle mass. I will, I will say that. I think the only true way to know is a DEXA scan. Uh, to my knowledge, if I'm wrong, feel free to let me know in the comments. I'm not against corrected if I say something wrong. Just be nice about it, okay? That's all I ask. Just don't come at me hard. 
harsh uh, because I am what I'm trying to say it don't always come out right so I'm hoping that I can get through this video without confusing you or sounding like I don't know what the hell I'm doing sometimes I don't know what the hell I'm doing again just telling you what I'm doing whether it's right or whether it's wrong I don't know I'm just gonna see how my body responds to it so what I have done um, is I have implemented a diet break I don't like the wording of that but it is what it is and um, it is what it's called and I don't consider myself to be on a diet uh, but your girl did need a break okay I feel like my body needed a break my body needed a jolt something different in order to pull it out of this plateau toe or bust through I, again the definition of insanity is you know to continue doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a different outcome y'all I just I'm at my wits end okay I gave it enough time that I could mentally give it it's time for me to take some action and I'm going to share with you at the end of this video what kind of catapulted me into like now sis it's time so this diet break for me actually how it differs now it's going to differ in the numbers now versus prior to bariatric surgery whenever I was very much in shape into fitness into nutrition lifting for growth and strength and you know I was about it okay now over the years even though I gained weight and I wasn't always at a healthy weight exercise was still always part of my life I always enjoyed exercise but I was overweight which you know is proof that you cannot out exercise a bad diet I still enjoyed eating healthy foods they're always part of my diet but so were unhealthy foods and because you know I was overweight obviously there was not a proper balance there so what that looked like for me in the past doing a bulk um, was eating at a surplus now what that looks like for me again I, I just had to kind of tweak the numbers to accommodate the fact that you know I have a sleeve now and you know my stomach is like a banana whereas before it wasn't I cannot physically eat enough food in volume to be at a surplus I don't want to be at a surplus now after bar bariatric surgery for me just eating at maintenance maintenance for my age my height my current weight my daily activity um, the fact that I'm a female it, all that goes into play with your numbers um, eating my maintenance calories which is around 2,000 pretty much doubled my normal calorie count since bariatric surgery I have struggled to get in more than around 1100 calories a day um, there have been days that I've, I've got in around 1500 calories but it's been through protein shakes not like food it's been liquid I feel better less sluggish just less blah when the majority of my calories come from liquid instead of food is that the right thing to do a year out probably not but it's just again it is what it is that's my body and I've just tried to listen to it and so my normal range of calories is between a thousand and eleven hundred calories 
I do still track my calories in my bariatric app uh, just because I'm a numbers kind of person. I want to see the numbers. I want to see what I ate. I want to see the numbers from my Fitbit. Like, I'm that person. I need to see it. Um, because usually whenever I try to wing it is when shit goes out in left field. And it's just when the, you know, the, basically the shit show begins. I need structure, okay? So... Even though I went on what is called a diet break, and you're, you're probably hearing this all over, you know, social media right now, uh, diet break, reverse diet, refeeds, and this and that. Y'all, this is not anything new. Um, it's just that we have social media outlets now that we didn't have years ago, which kind of makes it, you know, more widespread and more talked about, and it's not a new concept. People have been doing this for years, especially bodybuilders. Um, but the difference, from my knowledge, is basically the amount of time that you're implementing these things. Uh, reverse diet, refeed, diet breaks, all that. And the way that people typically implement it is increasing carbs, okay? Um... So, for me, being bariatric, post-bariatric, I can't up my numbers with the amount of food. I'm just not physically able to do it. Whereas before, I just ate more. Now, I just have to eat more calorie-dense foods more carb-rich foods in order to get my numbers up. I went into this thinking, okay, let me just try to eat, you know, what healthy foods, and I say that because I don't want nobody, I don't know why I did that, but some people will tell you avocados are healthy. Other people will tell you, no, don't eat that. Some people are going to tell you to eat beef. Some else is going to tell you, oh, only eat grass-fed. Somebody's going to say dairy's bad for you. Others going to say, you know, eat an egg for your protein. Look, I ain't telling you what to eat. I ain't telling you what to not eat. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, okay? No food for me is off limits just because of its content of calories, carbs, or anything. If I want something, then I have it, but I just have, I, I practice moderation. I have stayed away from sugars since bariatric surgery, since VSG, out of fear of dumping syndrome. I had a bad reaction to um, an artificial sweetener that was in a specific brand of sugar-free syrup that I was putting in my coffee, and I thought, hell, if that's doing that to me, I don't want nothing to do with no real table sugar, so I just hadn't had it. <laughs> out of fear of that happening again because y'all I'm gonna tell you dumping syndrome it ain't shh, it ain't nothing to play around with shit got real literally it's very painful anyway I just hadn't revisited I hadn't you know had any sugar I'm not being you know a big sweets eater since I was pregnant with my daughter that is now 25 years old when I was pregnant with her I craved sweets after I gave birth to her because I was so used to eating those sweets I continued to eat those sweets and it was a habit that I had to break and since I did I'm just not craved sweets I've not wanted sweets I will reach for a bag of potato chips before I reach for a brownie potato chips is my shit that's my jam so to speak it's my weakness you put damn near any kind of potato chip in front of me and it's going to be hard for me to say no. So, needless to say, in the past two weeks, I have ate more potato chips than I typically would since having bariatric surgery. I've not made potato chips, you know, off limits to myself. Because I feel like in doing that, you know, already being at such a restrictive 
amount of food that I can eat if I add on top of, oh, I can't have that because of what it is, y'all, I'll lose my damn mind, okay? Again, that's just me. You do what's best for you. Um, so, going in week one, I quickly seen, okay, this is not going to work because I just can't eat this amount of food. I already knew it, but I just had to, like, I guess prove it to myself that, okay, this is not going to be done with full fat yogurt, full fat, you know, cheese and, you know, mm -mm. so I went and I got myself some, uh, again, not telling you to do this, I went and got myself some cheddar jalapeno Cheetos, which is considered a slider food, if you know anything about that, it's foods that typically seems to go down real easy. Even after you've had bariatric surgery with no issues and you can eat more quantity of that food. Potato chips is what, you know, it would fall into the category of a slider food for me. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed them Cheetos. No guilt. Um, so, I did that. I had more burgers than what I would typically have. Have I had burgers since bariatric surgery? A few times, yeah. But I had more the last week of this diet break. And I actually revisited the sugar thing. A friend of mine, she's an amazing baker. She knew I was doing a diet break. Y'all, she baked me a cake. Sweetest thing ever. I thought, okay. Let me just try this, and I'm going to tell y'all how brave I was, or stupid one, I don't know. We were leaving to go camping, and I went over and got that cake from her like two hours before we left. Two, no, an hour before we left, and the trip was two hours from home. I thought, I got to try this cake. I didn't know if it was going to cause me to be in the bathroom and hold up the trip or not, or hit me halfway there, and, you know, maybe on one of them videos you see on YouTube on the side of the road doing my business. I didn't know what was going to happen, but I chanced it. It was stupid. No issues. Not the first stomach cramp. Never felt nauseous, but I did, you know, just have a small slither of it. I didn't, like, go all in on the cake and dive my face into it or anything like that. Y'all took that cake with me, and I'm pretty sure I ate 80% of that cake. No, it was just a, a small cake. But Sugar didn't bother me. Found out this weekend on this camping trip that I can now enjoy ice cream without a stomach ache. I could not do that prior to bariat bariatric surgery. Don't know what that's about. I enjoyed ice cream at the ice cream shop that's in the campground where we stayed. Y'all, it was wonderful. And I felt like, you know, not that I had guilt at the time for enjoying having those things and living life. My thing that was, my thought that was going through my head was, am I opening up a can of worms that I'm going to be able to put the lid back on once I have to get my ass back in gear come Tuesday morning? Because, you know, it was a holiday weekend. It was three-day weekend. I gave myself Monday, y'all. Sure did. Um, that was the thought that I kept toying with, or going back and forth with, and I thought, well, you know what? I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. We will see. There's only one way to know. What will be, will be. <laughs> Have I thought about the ice cream since we've been back? Hell yeah, I have. Has it been an issue to the point to where I'm like, oh, I got to track down and find that ice cream, you know, one similar to it, or go make the drive and go get some, or go buy me a bag of Cheetos? No, I'm fine. Because I have a goal, and I'm determined that I'm going to reach it, or do the best that I can to get as close to that goal as I can. Now, 
even though I was frustrated and have been for some time with this plateau, now it's time for me to tell you what kind of catapulted me into it's now. Um, I'm scheduled for a tummy tuck. October the 26th is my date. Granted, COVID does not interfere and elective surgeries are not shut down. It's going to happen October 26th. I'm locked in, I'm paid, we're good to go. Um, originally, I was like, you know, mommy makeover. I'm going to get some stuff sucked out, tucked, and buy me some titties. Since then, I have decided that I'm not going to buy the boobs. Um, it was something that I didn't even think about and hadn't even thought about in the past, and I don't know where it came from. I just, I think I kind of thought that if I got implants that it would make my stomach look flatter and that's like my thing is my belly and then I the more I thought about it, I thought I just don't want that now if, if you have implants if you want implants that's fine do you I'm happy for you I hope everything works out but for me personally I've not been you know I said that wrong I've not ever wanted larger boobs I've actually heard, you know, a cousin of mine, you know, make comments who is large chested about how she struggles with clothing. She wishes she could wear like the flowy things that I wear. She loves that style, like boho vibe, beachy, flowy things, but she can't because it looks like a tent on her and makes her look bigger in her waistline than she actually is. Um, several of my aunts who are big chested complain you know of their back hurting them all the time and like broad digging in here because of the weight and this and that and I thought why do I want to do that I just don't if you do then hey again do you but I thought no I, I don't I don't want to have to struggle with clothing you know or wearing a button up shirt because my cousin's like you know I have to get velcro and put it here just to keep this from popping open because you know the girls just want to show up and show out pretty much it's like uh, I'm not gonna do that so I'm just going with the tummy tuck so I'm gonna be having a extended tummy tuck which means it's gonna be hip to hip um, now I will talk about you know my procedure more in things that will in the title be specifically dedicated to tummy tuck if I can you know make a playlist and um, I will do that I've not really you know explored around on YouTube enough to know if I even if I can figure out how to do that I'll do that just to try to keep it streamlined for those of you that are interested in VSG things and mommy make everything so I will try if not just check out the title if it's something that piques your interest click on it if not don't I'm, I don't, I don't I don't mean to sound like a smart ass. That's not how I'm coming across. But I'm just, I, I don't know if I'm going to do the playlist or not. I'm going to attempt it. Um, so, I'm going with the extended tummy tuck, lipo, and muscle repair. October 26th. And so, that is what kind of made me like, okay. I've got, you know, at the time of my last consult with my doctor, my plastic surgeon, when I said, okay, let's lock it in, let's go ahead and schedule it. I had like nine weeks, I think, eight or nine weeks. Um, I'm not sure how many weeks now, till then, seven-ish, I think. If not, I will correct myself on the screen. Um, so I implemented the two week diet break to try to jolt my metabolism because I'm convinced that what I'm experiencing is metabolic adaptation my body is adapted to and adjusted to living in such a deficit that it's not responding to that anymore so I took it upon myself to do this diet break hoping to kick things in gear again and for me again that break did not comp you know was not compromised of a eating in a surplus simply just me eating at maintenance which is something that I've not been able to do since bariatric surgery my maintenance calories are around 2,000 and the first week was hard for me to get to that and the second week I was managing to 
get within my maintenance range one day I actually got up to 2,500 calories now I did track the entire time so it wasn't just like oh free for all break hey hell yeah school's out type thing no I tracked to make sure I ate enough okay and by you know during week one I noticed that my hunger increased at least to my body and I ate um, ate whatever I wanted with no guilt by the end of week two y'all I was ready for it to be over so again listen to your body it was like you know my body was saying oh hell yeah you're feeding us and then by the end of the two weeks I was it, it was like okay we hear you you're you know I hear you we get it there's food available let's reel it back in Karen you know so I went ahead and finished out the two weeks, but I didn't force feed myself, y'all. I just had to simply, again, implement foods that were higher in calories. But I was ready for it to be over just because I feel better when I eat less greasy foods, less fat, fatty foods type thing. I feel better eating vegetables, um, lean beef, chicken rice fruit and I wasn't eating a lot of those things just because they're not calorie dense enough you know to accomplish what I was trying to accomplish so I went in at 170 by the end of two weeks I weighed 180 it was almost 10 pounds to the ounce okay and already today is Thursday when I got back on my regular eating routine Tuesday and I'm down five pounds so with that quick with it happening that quick I'm sure it was a lot of fluid because of the types of foods that I was eating did I actually gain any body fat I don't know maybe if I did it was very little again it was a two week time frame already down five pounds might have gained a very small percentage of body fat I don't know again the only true way to know is you know measuring calipers and a DEXA scan um, so yeah mommy makeover not mommy makeover tummy tuck coming up um, I'm going to include some of the foods that I ate in no particular order. Some of these foods I didn't have every day. Some I did. It was just foods that I ate while on the diet break. Um, some were in rotation. Some were not. Okay. Um, so, yeah. And I noticed, too, um, oh, oh, what I'm doing now is I'm cycling um, with my numbers just so that uh, you'll have people tell you you know when you take a diet break gradually increase or when you're doing a reverse diet gradually increase to let your body adapt but then the same person will tell you that you're experiencing metabolic adaptation hmm. so no I don't want my body to get used to the new number I don't want to gradually go in and adapt which is what you're telling me you know has, is the problem okay so I agree with the people that just tell you you know dive in that's where I stand on that um, so literally from one day to the next I doubled my calories um, and so to keep things kind of hopefully rolling in the right direction I'm going to calorie cycle. I know you've probably heard of carb cycling. I'm going to do it with, well, all my numbers, really. Um, and what I've noticed is, like, say, today, I'm on the lower end of calories, making sure not to go below 1,200 calories. I will have more energy today. I will go in harder on the workout even though I'm eating less calories today 
tomorrow is when I will feel the effects of a low calorie, low carb day and it will hit me. So tomorrow I will eat more calories, carbs, and still work out. Um, but it won't be as an intense workout because tomorrow is when I will feel the effects of a low calorie day today. You might be different. Um, just for me, when I have a higher calorie day, I feel just blah. I feel bloated. I feel just not good. So I just kind of um, work my workouts around that uh, because it's really hard to eat and do, you know, an intense workout. I just can't. If you can, then hey. Uh, like, I even have to space out in the, you know, when I've drank pre-workout drinks, I have to make sure there's a, you know, certain amount of time between, or, you know, it's coming back up. Uh, and I was that way even prior to bariatric surgery, so it's for sure coming back up now that there's not as much room in there, okay? So, you just do what's best for you. Again, disclaimer, I'm not qualified, certified, none of that jazz to get on here and say, this is what you need to do, this is what you should do. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, sharing my journey with you, and we're going to see how this works. Again, going into the, I don't want to call it a cut, because I'm actually, you know, well, I guess it is, because I'm eating below my maintenance calories. Um... Going into this at 180, ending the break at 180. And so I will keep you guys updated. Um, I consider this to kind of be a mesh or mix, mashup, I think is the word I'm looking for, of Tummy Tuck Journey and VSG. So it's not going to go on no particular playlist. It's just, I'm just going to put this out there for y'all. Okay. So check out the foods that I ate. I'm going to attach those and then uh, probably on the next video because I've sat here and yapped my jaws longer than I meant to and the video is already long enough. Um, I will show you what I ate, you know, now that the diet break is over and how I'm cycling on the next video. So, thanks for watching check out the foods. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you would do that and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps my channel. And um, I will see you guys hopefully in a week or so. <laughs> Hope everybody's well.